Hey, it's Rhett Nelson with EastIdahoNews.com. I'm here in studio today with uh, Kendall Howard. Kendall is a living relative of Howard Schaefer, and Howard Schaefer was the sheriff of Jefferson County for more than 20 years. And this year marks 50 years since he was killed in the line of duty. And he's the only sheriff in Jefferson County to be killed in the line of duty. And so we are really happy that we found Kendall to be able to share his memories of his grandfather and uh, what he knows about about that day. So Kendall, thanks for thanks for coming in today. To well, talk thanks to for us. inviting me. Um, you were just three years old. It was March twenty fifth, nineteen seventy two, when your grandfather was killed. And so what I've been told of what happened that day is your grandfather was on duty and he was going down Yellowstone Highway in Rigby, and he was crossing the train tracks, and a train came and hit him and killed him and to this day no one knows what exactly he was doing. It was actually the railroad tracks right here um, on Yellowstone and Idaho Falls. Oh, it was not Falls. Okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, I heard he had his lights on and, or his light on and everything. I, yeah, like you said, nobody really knows what happened. You being just a three-year-old boy at the time, what do you remember about that day? Oh, that day? No, um, I wasn't told. Uh, they didn't know how I'd react to it. I didn't go to the funeral or anything. In fact, uh, when my uh, grandma uh, heard the news, she was actually babysitting us. And she grabbed my oldest sister and called for a babysitter to come and watch me, and she went to the hospital and, um, because I was really attached to my grandpa. I really was. Talk about that relationship you had with him. Like, how close were you guys? Every, like I said, we lived next door to him, and. Um, Every time I heard him outside or something, I'd run out there and follow him around. He used to call me Cannonball. <laughs> That's my nickname he called me. Well, how, where'd that nickname come from? Um, when I was born, I was three weeks premature and I still weighed 10 pounds. I was a big oh. baby. <laughs> so, oh, boy. In fact, they had to take me cesarean because, okay. because of that. So. Since you were only three when he passed away, do you have many memories? Of I have few, I, but I do. they're all good ones. They're all ones I'll never forget. What's the biggest thing that stands out in your mind? I remember one Saturday, it was either Saturday or Sunday, but um, my mom, my grandma, my grandma worked in um, a spud house, Roger Brothers. My mom worked at B Mart, which was uh, in Idaho Falls, and so my grandpa was babysitting me and my sister, and I remember the phone rang, and we were watching uh, cartoons, so it must have been Saturday, but he came in and answered the phone, and I. I don't know what was sad. Next thing I know, he had picked me up and my sister up, both under each arm, and ran out to his patrol car and put us in the back seat. And I remember bouncing down an old, a dirt road, a dusty dirt road, with his light sirens going. And uh, he pulled up to this farmhouse. And this, I guess, um, these two farm workers, their checks bounced, their paychecks, and they were beating up the farmer. And I remember my grandpa, without hesitation, stopping the car and getting out there and running up there and um, he got into the brussel and uh, I remember him wrestling one guy down and the second one tried to pull him off and couldn't so he, he, he took off running okay. but when he ran he, he come running towards us and I was that's I think that's why I remember because I was scared because this angry man was running towards the car and I couldn't see my grandpa I didn't know what was going on and next thing I know he was slammed on the hood of the car <laughs> And my grandpa held him there and had the other guy on the ground handcuffed and had this guy on the hood until, and held him there until a deputy showed up with another pair of handcuffs. And I remember when he did, he looked over in the window at me and I was looking up over the, the seat and I remember him winking at me and saying, we got him. And that's, a, you know, he was, he was like a superhero to me. He really was indestructible. But one thing I did find out through all this is I had no idea my grandpa was chief of police at one time in Rigby. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I had no idea. I knew he was a state cop, and I knew he was a deputy I had no, and a sheriff, but I had no idea he was chief of police. And then he played uh, pro professional uh, baseball for a while for, before all that, before he even met my grandma for the Kansas City, I think they, they were the Blue Sox then. I got some of his baseball bats, as a matter of fact, from the, him being there. Oh, really? Yeah, I got two of them. He was playing baseball, and he bought a car. And um, they had a game back west over here somewhere, and they, him and his buddy on the team said, let's just drive my car instead of ride the bus. 
So they uh, brought the car down and they came through Sugar City where my grandma grew up and they saw there was going to be a dance that night. And they said, hey, let's just camp here or get a motel tonight and go to this dance. He met my grandma at the dance and the car he was driving was the first car my grandma ever saw with her own eyes, not seeing it in like a, a newspaper or something. Oh. It went through um, Sugar City. And so uh, they met at that dance and I heard he, he was so in love with my grandma, he gave up because my grandma didn't want to move away from her family and he gave up his baseball career and moved here and that's when he became a cop. I heard that's what helped him too was, was uh, um, the guy, uh, the chief or whatever, state police, wherever he's called, uh, was a fan of baseball. That's how he got hired on at the state police. That's what started his law career. And one thing I liked is uh, when he took us to town, when he babysat us and he had to go to the store, you know, you were like royalty. Everybody acknowledged him in some way in respect. You know, would wave or say hi or hold the door open for him. We'd go into stores and the clerks would give us candy, you know, while they were talking to him. And all the time, I mean, it was just, I, I didn't know really what a sheriff was then, but I could tell there was something special about him because of the way people reacted to him when he, the, he, when he was in their presence. And I, I remember his big white shoulders. I mean, he was stout. You know, he was like, I mean, he was like, I mean, he... Chiseled? Like, yeah. In shape, athletic build? Strong. I mean, he, I saw him, and that, one of my memories was him. He, he took, took down those two guys, and those guys were big guys, and he took them down, didn't even break a sweat. He wrestled one down to the ground and handcuffed him and had the other one slammed on the hood of his car before he got, that other guy got to us. Wow. But I think the guy was going to run past the car. But as a kid, he'd seen him run towards us and his face is red and he's got these big eyes, he's scared and he's running. I was scared because I couldn't see my grandpa anymore because he was in the way and I didn't know what was going on over there. And, yeah. and my, next thing I know, he slammed on the hood. <laughs> wow. And, and one and another thing too is I he never reached for his gun never you know he he never did and I I think that is really impressive right there because me personally going up against two guys with me I think I'd have a taser or something or mace or something yeah. he had his gun he never reached for it I mean he just ran right in there and um, didn't even hesitate and it's that that. I mean, that'd take courage, it really would. We, I recently heard about an effort they, in Rigby, at the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, they want to get the law enforcement building there named after your grandfather. What's your reaction to that? How do you feel about that? I think it's great. Um, you know, I I know there's been times I've gone up there and I see his grave on Memorial Day, and, you know, and I've had to remind him to put a flag on there. It kind of broke my heart, you know, thinking that he's being forgotten for all that time he served and all the things he's done and you know this right here will carve his name in in you know carve his name in concrete I mean, more or less you know he'll be remembered and so I thought it was great awesome I think he he deserves it but I, I hope I can touch as many lives as he has and be remembered by his family like I like he was and